Okay, it looks like we're on the air. I'm just going to open up <clears throat> my PowerPoint so everyone can see along with me. And go back to the beginning. Here we go. Uh, I just want to welcome everyone to week seven of Eat Clean and Get Lean. Tonight we're going to talk about uh, discipline and accountability. Uh, it's, we're going to start in just a few minutes. It's just a few minutes before 8 o'clock. So I will uh, be able to take any questions that anyone has with regards to the program. Last week we talked a lot about different options that are available to us, how we could uh, work on our eat less, exercise less Monday through Friday and perhaps eat more, exercise more on the weekends or vice versa. We have a situation where we can get a lot of uh, really great workouts during the week and we choose to eat more and exercise more during the week and on the weekends we might like take it a little easy we don't want to work out we want to just relax a little more so we might move to an eat less exercise less um, I know that I spend most of my time in an eat less exercise less mode now even though I, um, I do exercise um, you know for strength I do my resistance training about two three times a week uh, but I really focus a lot on walking. Um, I'm not looking to build a lot of mass and a lot of size anymore. I'm looking to stay healthy and to stay lean and to um, make sure that I'm eating good, nutritious foods. The other thing I wanted to address uh, this week is if you haven't seen it yet, I did put uh, a couple links up for that movie Origins that's been on the internet and it is right in alignment with what we're talking about with regards to the eat clean and get lean program talking about organic foods and making sure we're drinking clean water and and knowing uh, where our food is coming from and the ability to move uh, to stimulate the mitochondria in our cells so that uh, they get more robust and they they proliferate and get larger in number and in size and it helps us to control our blood sugar. Uh, also, watching out for food chemicals and food additives that are going to affect our hormones. One of the things that really impressed me with the movie was saying that a lot of the uh, uh, phytoestrogens that are seen in the petroleum products that are, are, are in our diet, like the um, uh, water bottles, for example, how they can get uh, affected by being out in the sun too long and some of the uh, petroleum actually breaks down and enters into our water. We drink that water and uh, also they're using uh, other plastics and things like lotions and toothpastes and such. So we have to be a little mindful of the products we use. Uh, you got to be mindful of the uh, shampoos and deodorants that you're using again because these hormones that are released from these products actually can override our own hormonal signals and cause a lot of confusion. Things like headache and lack of concentration and a lot of very bizarre illnesses are, relink are linked directly to the plastics in our diet. So that's why we say don't put plastic in a microwave. Uh, I know here at, at Camp Fitness we do not advocate the use of microwaves ever. Um, you know, heat something up on a stove or or put it in, the, in a toaster oven, but um, we're not big advocates of the use of microwaves. So I just wanted to spend a few minutes talking about that. I also want to mention that next call will be on something I'm going to title Nutrition Insurance, and you'll see some promos for that coming up over the next week. You know, we're going to talk about things like health insurance and auto insurance and homeowners insurance. Uh, if you have a business, you might have business insurance, you have life insurance, dental insurance, you know, all kinds of different insurances. And we, we hope that you never need to make a claim on any of those insurances. It's because something went wrong that you need to make claims on your auto insurance or your, God forbid, your life insurance or your health insurance. But with nutrition insurance, the money that you put out, you get back directly because nutrition insurance is you're buying a product or service that allows you to have optimal health and wellness and any money you put in you get back 
uh, dollar for dollar. So those are good things. And I'll spend more time talking a little bit more about that, but I, uh, I'll uh, talk a little bit about nutrition and nutrition insurance next week. So let's get started with week seven, eat clean and get lean. And this week we're going to talk about discipline and accountability. Okay. So I'm going to throw you guys a curve right off the bat. Okay. Step number one, heck and check. I will tell you that you're not undisciplined. I will tell you that you're not unaccountable. I will tell you that you're not weak. I'll tell you that you're not bad. And I'll tell you that you are not stupid. What is the problem with you being able to stay on your diet and exercise program and making the right lifestyle choices? Your heck is not in check and your neurotransmitters are dysfunctional. Well, what does that mean? We all know what heck stands for, hunger, energy, and cravings. And we've talked about the four major neurotransmitters, acetylcholine, GABA, serotonin, and dopamine. Well, what do we know if you're hungry all the time and you have low energy and you have massive amount of cravings, are you going to be able to stay on track? No, the answer to that is no. What if you're losing weight but your heck is still in check? Is that a good thing? No, it's not. Um, if you're still losing weight and your heck is not in check, you're not going to be able to sustain that and you're going to sabotage your program. I would rather someone come to me who says, you know, my heck is okay, um, you know, my hunger is good, my, I have good energy, and I don't have much cravings, but, Mike, I've stopped losing weight. That's a lot easier for me to fix than someone who says, yeah, I'm down two pounds this week, but I don't know how much longer I can continue this because all I think about is what I'm going to eat next, and I'm craving sugar. So we don't want that. Now, with regards to your neurotransmitters, what do we know when your serotonin and dopamine levels are, are not sufficient? You, you lack motivation. You lack confidence. You lack your ability to concentrate on task. So um, if you feel undisciplined, if you feel like you're unaccountable, if you feel like you're weak, and God forbid you say, I, I feel stupid, it's probably not that. It's probably more that your heck is not in check and your neuros, neurotransmitters are dysfunctional. Do, so do you feel better now? I hope so. There. We found the etiology, the root cause of your less than optimal health and wellness. So everyone should feel better because here we found the answer. So now what should I do? Okay, now that we know what the problem is, now we can address the problem. So let's talk a little bit about your mood. Mood going out of balance could be an indication of chronic stress, sleep deprivation, lack of exercise, or any number of life changes. Well, we can change our mood. Sure, we can change our mood. And we've even seen these diet and lifestyle changes conquer critical, clinical depression and anxiety when drugs couldn't touch it. Let's, let's refer to the Duke study. This study came out over 10 years ago. I remember when this came out. And we were looking at the efficacy of exercise versus things like Paxil and Zoloft, which help with, with mood and, and depression. So let's talk a little bit more deeply about the Duke study itself. Uh, the article that's referenced to the study provides a review of the evidence supporting exercise as an effective treatment of depression in older adults. Depression is prevalent amongst older adults and is associated with significant morbidity, increased risk of mortality, and economic burden. Although effective treatments for depression do exist, such as antidepressant medi medication and cognitive behavioral therapy, this, the disorder remains inadequately treated for many older individuals. Recently, the use of exercise as a treatment modality for depression has received increased attention. Results of these studies suggest that exercise leads to a reduction in depressive symptoms when compared to wait list, social contact controls, and antidepressant -medica anti medication. So what we're saying here is that, um, again, the, the, the medication could be just a band-aid on a bullet wound, not solving the problem. 
Of course, cognitive therapy, uh, behavioral therapy, that's something that allows us to talk things out and that can help us to reduce the amount of stress um, by de being able to speak things out. How many times do uh, people say, I don't want you to fix me, I just want to be heard. I want someone to hear me. Let me finish a sentence. And then all of a sudden you feel better. But moreover, the studies have shown that exercise used as a treatment modality for depression has a higher significant rate of, of change versus the cognitive behavioral therapy and medications. And it's something that's free. You can do it any time during the day. And it has no side effects. Exercise only has benefits. So let's talk a little bit more about exercise. Food, exercise, and sleep definitely impact your mood. But we say exercise is the number one way. Movement is a great antidepressant, probably the best one we have. This is where the benefits of traditional aerobic-based exercise shine. They are very good at elevating your mood. Walking gives off many of the same benefits uh, without the negative heck and check effects. So we talk about walking. We talk about walking all the time. We talk about walking, balancing out your brain chemistry, serotonin and dopamine levels. We talk about walking, helping you balance out your blood sugar. Most of us are walking every day for 30 minutes to an hour every day. Okay. The only time that walking has not been emphasized tremendously in our programs are on the eat more, exercise more models. But what are we doing? We're exercising. We're exercising with we're exercising vigorously with good amounts of effort, working to get lactic acid responses. We're doing the traditional workouts. We may be doing the burst training or the metabolic chain workouts, and then we're also walking. During the eat more, exercise more part of our weeks, we're exercising every day. So um, we just want people to realize that if there's a lack of discipline and you feel like you're not doing what you should be doing, go back to the basics. Go back to an eat less, exercise less model and go back to your walking. What are some other ways you can improve your mood? Eating frequently can help. Low blood sugar is associated with anxiety and depression. Don't let yourself get hungry. Okay, We talk about in the Eat Clean, Get Lean program, for example, in an Eat More, Exercise More model, we're eating the three meals, but we're also having the protein snacks in between. In an eat less, exercise less, hopefully the physical demands on the body are going down, so the nutrition should go down. Remember, we don't talk about um, um, you know, eating less and, and balancing out your metabolism. We talk about balancing metabolism, you'll naturally eat less, and then you'll naturally start to lose weight. Make sure you get adequate sleep. You know, I did a whole talk on sleep two weeks ago. Sleep deprivation is known to make us anxious, depressed, and crabby. Now, I am also in the process of working on another video dealing just with sleep and the negative ramifications of sleep, and that's going to be available probably sometime next week. I got a lot of work to do this Sunday. I got a lot of videos I want to shoot. Um, so you'll get another video on sleep. And I can't tell you how important it is. While I'm, while I'm looking at sleep, um, I just got onto a new product that has three active natural ingredients in it. We've talked about melatonin. We've talked about 5-HTP. Uh, but I've come across something that also has L-thalanine in it, which not only helps you to fall asleep, but helps you stay asleep. And that's some of the big problems. Sometimes people fall asleep, but then they wake up at 2 o'clock in the morning and they start walking around. Um, so we found something that will help you not just fall asleep, but stay asleep. And uh, if you have any questions on that, get in contact with me. We'll talk a little bit of, more about that next week when we start to talk more about um, nutrition insurance. Okay. Um, we talk about balancing out your blood sugar and having adequate blood sugar to get through the night. That's why we have a starch in our last meal of the night. So don't completely cut out starch. If you have mood issues, going too low can cause problems. And, and also, don't eat too much starch and sugar either. Find the right balance for you. 
What else, what other things can we use to enhance our mood? Well, getting in enough protein stabilizes blood sugar and acts as the building blocks for all your brain chemistry, your serotonin, your dopamine levels. Cacao and coffee can be great ways to help get you focused and relaxed and lift depression. So if you go next door to Sweet Teas and you get your coffee, they have nutmeg there, they have cacao, and they have cinnamon. Okay, cinnamon helps with balancing blood sugar. Nutmeg is a great spice, and cacao, again, we've talked about the benefits of cacao. So you can add a little bit of that to your coffee, and maybe a little almond milk. They serve almond milk as sweet teas, too, thanks to me. <laughs> I pushed for that, and they did it. And, um, you know, if you can tolerate milk or cream, that's fine. But, uh, again, coffee is, is a great help. Also, herbal teas containing things like passion flower, lemon balm, chamomile, hops, valerian root, and others can act like a weak Xanax and help to stop anxiety. So we're finding all these great healthy ways to help you enhance your mood and feel better. Digestion. Whether it's the case at the onset or it develops later, you might notice you're getting some digestive upset, which could reveal itself with things like gas, bloating, or an upset stomach. Your heck could be in check, and you could be burning fat, but it could still happen. And that means you're usually going to see weight gain to follow. So getting your digestion in order will help you to stay disciplined and in control of your program. If your digestion's off, everything's off. Uh, I One of the things that I thought was really great in... Um, the movie that I saw this weekend is they were looking at plants and specifically I think they were looking at orange trees and when they noticed that the fruit was not really good on the orange tree and the flowers weren't blooming on the orange tree and the tree just looked rather weak you didn't spend much time looking at the fruit you saw the the farmer going down into the soil and checking out the quality of the soil now, the tree has roots, and roots extend into the soil. And the roots help draw the nutrients out of the soil. That's one of the things we're going to talk about next week with regards to nutrition insurance is how effective is that tree, in this example, an orange tree, how effective is it pulling nutrients out of the soil? Well, what is required for a tree to pull nutrients out of the soil? Well, first of all, the nutrients have to be there. So, you know, in organic farming or sustainable farming, there's years where they let the, the field go what's called fallow, which means they don't plant anything. They allow the, the soil to become naturally re-enriched. There's also, you have to have certain microbes in the soil. Microbes help the roots to pick up the minerals. Now, in a human being, what do we do? What do, what do we have? We have a digestive system from your mouth to your anus is one big long tube, for lack of better terms, okay? And our roots extend into this tube, into this, for example, into your small intestines. And what grows from the small intestines into the channel that runs through your body are your uh, little um, um, uh, bacilli that go into the digestive tract nutrients out so those are really those microvilli are actually our roots that help us draw minerals and vitamins and nutrients out of our GI tract so we need microbes down there too that's why you'll hear Susan and I talk a lot about probiotics are you on a good probiotic if you have a lot of good bacteria in your gut meaning basically your small intestine it's a lot easier for you to pull the nutrients out of the food you eat. But if you have a lot of bad bacteria in your gut, then you're not able to get those nutrients in. It's gonna make you feel hungry. You're gonna have tired, you're gonna be very tired. You're gonna have immense cravings because you're not able to draw the nutrients out of the food. Remember, it's not what you eat, it's what you can absorb, okay? And I know this might be like way over some people's heads listening to this, Again, that's where the coaching comes in. This is where Susan and I can spend a lot more time discussing these issues with you. And, and hopefully, if you 
get the ability to understand the purpose behind the probiotic. Now you understand the why and the how is easy. You just buy a good, uh, healthy probiotic and you take it every day. And we'll talk more about that next week with nutrition insurance. Okay, so what I have written down here next is um, about di digestion. It's because the digestive tract is probably our most, the most important of our metabolic organs. It is a major center of the nervous system, the hormonal system, and the immune system. It is a window into your global metabolic function. We call the GI tract also your second brain. And there is a tremendous communication between the gut and the brain. And 60 to 70% of your immune system is located in your gut because of the healthy microbes that help you to absorb the food, energy from the food you eat and also to regulate your immune system. So a healthy gut is a healthy immune system. If your digestion is off or starts becoming off, then that's an indication of trouble ahead, which you'll eventually see with out of check heck. Ooh, that was pretty good. Sound like a Dr. Seuss term. You're, you've got your heck out of check or your check out of heck. If this is the case, start by assessing if maybe you've developed a food allergy or sensitivity. Okay, what are some of the foods? We'll get into those in a minute. Oh, there they are right here. Some typical food sensitivities include processed foods, food chemicals and food additives, grain, gluten, and dairy. And the grain, the gluten, and the dairy are very highly affected by the genetically modified seeds that are used to grow the grain, which, include, which contains the gluten, and the cows eat the grain, and therefore their milk and their cheese and their butter and their yogurt is also affected by the genetically modified seed that, is, that grows the grain. Grain being things like soybeans and corn. If this is you, try our simple digestive restoration program. That entails reverting back to a 3 2 1 program and then adding a hypoallergenic diet to it, which means we start to eliminate things like grains and corn, except for brown rice and quinoa, dairy, nightshades, the potato, tomato, eggplant, all kinds of peppers. Beans and legumes, that also includes peanuts, eggs, soy, any other food you feel you may be reacting to, refined sugars, food chemicals, and food additives. You see how it's all coming back with metabolism. What affects the weight regulating mechanism in your brain, in your hypothalamus? Sugar balance, stress, food chemicals and food additives, exercise. What affects your mental status, your mood? exercise, balanced blood sugar, regulating brain chemistry. Can you see how it all comes together? That means if you're doing a 3-2-1 and you're eating animal protein, vegetables except for nightshades, fruits, nuts, and seeds except for peanuts, you take out all the other foods out of your diet for four weeks, and then you challenge each one every four days to see if any reactions come up. So what do, we, what do I mean by that? If you've removed all these things out of your diet and you start putting one back in every four days and you have a reaction, you know what food you, you have a reaction to. So if you've eliminated everything and all of a sudden you put eggs back in your diet and everything's fine, then you know you probably don't have a problem with eggs. Four days later, you decide to put dairy back in, you start putting milk in your coffee, and all of a sudden, bam, your digestion system goes AWOL, and you start having all kinds of stomach cramps and pain, then you know that milk and, and dairy products are a source of at least sensitivity for you. I know I did that this summer. I hadn't eaten ice cream in about six months, and had a bowl of ice cream, and I had horrible abdominal cramps. So that's very indicative to me that A, I don't have the enzymes to break down the lactose, and B, I have a tremendous sensitivity to dairy. Okay, so these are the things that you learn in a elimination diet, and then you start putting foods back in. It's very easy to identify what works for you and what doesn't work for you. So if you have a reaction, 
eliminate that food indefinitely. If you don't have a reaction, you may add that food back into your diet. This is super easy to do when you're following a 3-2-1 approach because instead of worrying about managing too many meals, you only have to worry about the last meal. Why? Because in a 3-2-1, Two of the meals are your protein shakes that you already know work for you because you've been doing them intermittently at least for the last seven weeks. Because the other two meals will be hypoallergenic when you're using dairy-free, i.e. whey and casein and egg-free protein powder. Exercise recovery. In addition to keeping your eye on your internal system, the other force is impacting your program. You need to continue to assess your workouts and how they make you feel. Your ability to perform well during exercise and rec recover adequately from it is a great way to assess your metabolic balance. So if you do a workout and then two days later you still can't get off the couch, you might have overdone it. You know, the other thing to remember too is that you don't want to undertrain. You don't want to wake up the next day and, and not feel any significant change. You should feel some mild soreness. A little bit of delayed onset muscle soreness is, you, is very uh, customary with the program that you're on. Okay. So if you start to notice that workouts that you use become easier and more uh, uh, start becoming, oh, let me back up for a minute. <laughs> let's, let's try this again. If you start to notice that workouts that used to be easier, start becoming more difficult. This may signal that you're moving into an eat less, exercise more track. Good, I'm glad I straightened that out. Okay, so this is not uncommon either. Sometimes people start to say, hey, you know, uh, this eat less is working good for me, but I can, I can do a little bit more work. And now they start working too hard and their food does not support their exercise program. And workouts that used to seem easy are now becoming more difficult. So it signals that you're moving into the eat less, exercise more track. This is often the first warning sign in athletes who suffer from overtraining. So, okay, I'm used to walking, now I'm gonna go out and run a 5K, and you haven't been training for it, and you've been eating real low, and all of a sudden you don't finish the 5K. That's indicative that you're in the eat less, exercise more trap. So if you are refueling your body correctly, you should notice improvements in your fitness. If you're not seeing this, then be aware that something is off. Also, soreness, aches, and pains as a result of exercise can help you assess things as well. It is normal and in fact beneficial to have soreness as a result of weight training workouts. What is not normal is to feel sore constantly. If you're noticing that you're sore much past a few days, this may be a sign of inadequate recovery. This is often an issue with nutrition, such as too few calories, not enough carbohydrates, or inadequate protein intake. So these are the things that we're monitoring through our AIM process. Assess, investigate, modify. Soreness lasting several days is more frequent in beginners who have done very little exercise and are now becoming active. Once you are act, once your active exercise soreness should well, once you are active, comma, exercise soreness should not be continuous and chronic and should resolve within a few days. So now we're at our conclusion. Remember. You're not undisciplined. You're not lazy. You're not stupid. You're not unaccountable. You suffer from your heck out of check and exercise, sleep, wake cycles are off. The brain chemistry needs to be rebalanced. Okay. I hope these suggestions tonight will help. Um, this is something that Susan and I deal with every day in our clinic with our clients and our ability to be there spot on at the moment helps an awful lot. So this is where the coaching comes in, guys. You know, you 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 got into a eat clean, get lean coaching program. Okay, um, this is where you can send me an email. You can get in touch with me on Facebook. If I have to talk to you on the phone, 
at this point, I will do that. I want to see people succeeding. We have Thanksgiving coming up a week from this Thursday. It's very, very important that we were able to get through the holiday season without sabotaging our program. I know someone uh, wrote me and told me he lost 11 pounds so far. I think that's fantastic. I don't want to see him regain those 11 pounds. Not that I think he would, but potentially that could happen if you know you get all confident and you, your workouts start to back off because you're going to parties and you're going out to dinner and you're having a good time and all of a sudden you start bringing foods and alcohol into your diet that weren't there before. You can put the weight on very, very quickly and, and lose all the gains you've made in a relatively short amount of time. The other thing I wanted to mention, and I, I'm sure Susan sent this out as a reminder, is that next week's call will be on Tuesday night at 8 o'clock. The reason for that is this. We have a huge parade in Manasquan, 8 o'clock, or should I say 7 o'clock, on Wednesday night. I have a lot of clients who come by the studio. I have a lot of friends who come by the studio. We stand out front. We watch my son go by in the marching band. We watch the floats go by from the high school. And of course, last but not least, every fire truck within a five mile radius comes pouring down Main Street. And the noise is deafening. <laughs> so the ability to do a seminar or webinar on Wednesday night uh, would be impossible to, to yell over the, the sound of the fire engine, which is great. I'm glad that we, we live in a community where we can celebrate Thanksgiving, and then, of course, uh, they continue on to Mallet Park, and we have a big bonfire, and it's, it's just a lot of fun. So I want to let everybody know that we will have a webinar next week. I think it's vital that we all get together so that I help keep you guys in the right frame of mind, and um, I will be inviting um, all my clients, as I do every week, to the next webinar because we are going to be talking a lot about in nutrition insurance, and I want people to realize that there are ways that you can get a tremendous bang for your buck with nutrition with just very little time, money, and energy. So we really want to focus on that. All right, I'm going to uh, get out of this and uh, reopen this slide here. Okay. And I'm going to see if anybody has any questions. Um, okay. Um, the question came up about the Duke study. Uh, it was in 2004. And if you were just to type into a Google search, uh, Duke study and depression 2004, you could see the same articles that I, that I referenced. That's, that's not a problem. Anytime anybody has any questions or concerns, or if I say something that um, is confusing, always feel free to um, ask me questions about it because I want to be able to educate you guys. You know, we look at the, the focus of, of our business. We do personal training. We do nutrition. We do uh, supplementation and vitamin counseling. We have these webinars. We have the RX Studio. Uh, we have a tremendous YouTube channel, which we put out a lot of educational material on, and we post on Facebook every day. So our goal is really to help people to achieve by empowering you, teaching you what we've learned over the last 30 years to help you to have success as well. I don't see any more questions. Uh, this was a quick call tonight, guys, about a half hour. Um, Again, you know, really focus on what you're doing with regards to your eat less, exercise less model and your eat more, exercise more model. You can hybridize it so that you're doing eat more, exercise more during the week, eat less, exercise less on the weekends. Okay. Um, use the videos in the RX Studio. They're available to you. There's about 50 videos probably on uh, metabolic chain activities with regards to doing the 20 minute workouts. Uh, we have the hotel workouts if anybody's traveling. You can take uh, any kind of iPad, laptop, 
iPhone and watch the videos right there in the gym. Put your headphones on and uh, go to work. I know Susan's, I think Susan's uh, videotaping another one this Friday morning. So we'll be adding more to it. And again, don't miss out on next Tuesday night. I'm going to have some great information that I really want to share with you. Uh, we're going to be working on, on that this weekend, putting that together. The other thing that we did, oh good, I'm, I'm glad I uh, remembered this before I hung up. We just went into a partnership with a food company called Eat Clean Delivery. If anyone's interested, I have a lot of information on that. You can also go to Facebook to Eat Clean Delivery. And we have a deal with him, the owner, his name is Mike too, um, that he's going to give us a deal on lunches and dinners. These are gourmet meals with healthy sources of protein, fats, and carbohydrates, about 30 grams of protein, 30 grams of carbohydrate, um, and less than 450 calories, and the meals look absolutely delicious. We filmed a video today on it, so you'll see the video that we filmed today probably in the next day or so. But I have the forms in my office. I can email them to you. Um, he's giving us five lunches per week for $50 a week. That's $10 a lunch. So anyone who goes out and eats real healthy food is probably spending more than $10 a day for lunch. Plus the fact you have to, if you go out for this kind of food, you're leaving a tip. You have to leave your office, which takes up time. And you may not be getting an organic quality meal for that $10. You might be forced to say, well, I'm gonna, <laughs> I gotta go to Mike's Sub. And there's nothing wrong with Mike's Subs, they're very nice, but that's not really an eat clean, get lean type meal. We all, we all can appreciate that. All right, so look for the video from the eat clean delivery. If anybody has any questions and, and needs the form, I can email it to you. And again, next Tuesday will be the next call and we will be talking about nutrition insurance. I got some really great stuff coming at you. And if anybody has any questions, shoot me a message on Facebook, shoot me an email. If you're struggling and you don't want to talk about it here online tonight, and you really want some help, get in touch with Susan and I. We're here to help you. We're your coaches. All right? Uh, with that, I'm going to end the call. Everybody have a great night, and we'll talk to you shortly. Bye-bye.